Hello, this is Lee Anthony Davis with another announcement video on my YouTube channel. This is unprecedented because this video is going out at the right time. It's fast approaching, five past midnight uh, on Saturday the 23rd of September. A warm welcome if you're joining me. Uh, coming up on this video, we've got a uh, group of the day, contribute of the day, birthday announcements, a bit of Doctor Who news, uh, also updates on my page group and Instagram account, and also some Doctor Who merchandise to show you, and of course, yesterday's answer to the Doctor Who quiz question, and another Doctor Who quiz question. And not forgetting, of course, what's coming up. Uh, so, I do apologise for yesterday, I forgot to include the Doctor Who question uh, and the answer, but I did do a follow-up video uh, straight after I did that when I realised my mistake so uh, I was told that in the comments as well so thank you very much for letting me know uh, I completely slipped my mind but anyway I won't forget it today I can assure you right okay I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on really quickly uh, group of the day for Friday the 22nd of September goes to the official Tom Baker era group well done to them and, on, and contribute to the day for uh, Friday the 22nd of September goes to Philip Fairburn well done I'll post it up on Instagram Facebook Twitter and my story later on today right moving on birthday announcements right here we go celebrating their birthdays on well celebrating their birthdays today on Saturday 23rd of September are Martha Laners, Michael Shorts Robert Tamburro Salvatore Ruggeri, Virginia Collins, Ashke Baldiani, Robert Phillips. Well done. It's your birthday. It's your special day. Congratulations. Uh, if you know these people, I know one of them, uh, Martha Lanez. Uh, she's on one of my group. Uh, well, she used to be on one of my groups. I don't have those groups anymore. But... Uh, she's on some of my friends' groups, so I'll definitely uh, make sure that they know about it. Uh, so anyway, well, it's not just about one person, it's about more. Uh, they're all celebrating their birthday, so wish them well. I think you'll find them on Facebook. Right, moving on. Uh, uh, Doctor Who news. Now, this is about uh, Peter Davidson. Peter Davidson, remember, in 2013 did uh, a, a skink called the, uh, well, spoof, called the Five-ish Doctors uh, which was uh, uh, a sort of uh, spoof uh, about, uh, and which featured Sylvester McCoy. Uh, uh, I think it was Colin Baker in that one as well. Anyway, and David Tennant appeared, and along with a few others. Uh, and uh, what what's happening here is that Peter Davison wanted to do a, a follow up, a sequel for the 60th anniversary, uh, but unfortunately the BBC don't want to know, and. Uh, they're they're more concerned with uh, getting their uh, anniversary specials, and obviously uh, they wanted to uh, include, uh, you know, they they wanted to make sure. Well, include uh, that's not the word. Uh, they wanted to immerse their own stuff uh, for the new Doctor. So they 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 they're, they're making out they didn't have the time. I think, in my opinion, they should make the Doctor Who classic area exclusive to the 60th anniversary because it's part of the integral of the show, isn't it, really? Uh, Peter Davison is uh, really uh, uh, a very good, very good Doctor when he was out. Uh, he didn't have much plot to play around with because some of the writers weren't sort of up to scratch. But he made the stories work, like Tom Baker did. Uh, and uh, he brought out this uh, spoof uh, in 2013. You probably know the one I'm talking about. It's called The Five-ish Doctors. Uh, it was like uh, to commemorate the uh, 50th anniversary in 2013. But the BBC this time uh, decided not to... to Because uh, uh, Peter Davison was waiting for the phone call because he was going to produce it again. Uh, he's going to include David Tennant, obviously. They're all on board. Uh, Gemma Louise Coleman wanted to, was uh, was happy to, to go along with it. Sylvester McCoy, Colin Baker. But the BBC, this time, 
do not want to know. They didn't. They didn't get back to him, and uh, and I think, I think, I think uh, the BBC are sort of bit, a little bit selfish, uh, putting too much immer immersing too much into the 60th anniversary. I think they there should be room for the classics. If you know somebody like Peter Davison wants to make one, especially for the fans, they should do it. You know, not sort of uh, concentrate on RTD and stuff like that, because RTD wouldn't have been a, uh, wouldn't have been here to write it if it weren't for people like Peter Davison, Tom Baker, Patrick Trout, and all those other great doctors and great directors at the time, because the show wouldn't have survived without those kind of people. Uh, I'm also Philip Hinchcliffe. You know, you know these are the sort of people I would have. Uh, writing the new adventures uh, in this new era because they know how to write science fiction. They know how to act it. They know how to produce it. They're brilliant. Barry Letts, uh, sadly, is no longer with us. Uh, Verity Lambert's no longer with us. Uh, Philip Hinchcliffe is with us. Uh, I think he wouldn't want the aggravation. Uh, uh, the BBC uh, did him uh, a a bad term really because they cowered into Mary Whitehouse because Philip Hinchcliffe had got Doctor Who spot on when he was doing it it was known as the golden age uh, because he had Tom Baker Tom Baker enjoyed doing uh, stories uh, acting on the Philip Hinchcliffe era uh, so did and of course you had Robert Holmes as well brilliant brilliant actors uh, sorry actors brilliant brilliant writers sorry brilliant writer Robert Holmes uh, Eric Seward uh, wanted to include him in the, uh, uh, well, he was very ill in 1986, uh, sadly he passed away and uh, JNT didn't want to know, you know, he wanted the story to be rewritten and uh, what Eric Seward re resigned because not only did his best friend pass away, but uh, JNT wasn't happy with the ending. And so Eric Seward said, you cannot use this story. You're not going to use this final two-parter or the final final part. Because what it was, it was obviously a trial of the Time Lord. Uh, it was basically a trial of the show, really. And uh, Robert Holmes uh, had wrote the end. And what they'd done was they left it in limbo. In other words, uh, nobody knows what's going to happen. Uh, he went out in a blaze of glory or he'll be back. Well, in my opinion, he would have been back. JMT was protecting his own sort of uh, uh, smothering of the show, you know, he was, it, because he, cause it all went wrong with Colin Baker. Uh, sadly, uh, the BBC wanted him replaced. And it wasn't Colin Baker's fault. It was bloody JMT's fault, really, because uh, he put so much rubbish into it and extravaganza. Uh, 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 a lot of people didn't like the idea of Bonnie Langford uh, joining the team uh, because, you know, she wasn't known for uh, acting. She was more uh, sort of song and dance and stuff like that. And she was no, well known for Just William uh, with uh, I'll scream and scream and scream until I'm sick and all that. Uh, and it was very hard to get over that when, when you've seen her as a child actor. Uh, but... She did do her best. I'll give her that. She did do her best, but unfortunately, she was she was cast for the point of stunt casting. So uh, really, uh, with Robert Holmes passing away, Eric Seward thought that was the final straw, and he just walked out. Uh, so, so poor old Pip and Jane Baker were left to uh, they didn't have nothing to go on, and they uh, were basically left in limbo. And the, but they, for whatever they came up with was a bloody good good uh, situation that they found themselves in for themselves to finish that story, and they did. They did well because they weren't allowed to use Eric Stewart's script or work from it. They had to do the guesswork, and they did very well considering. Anyway, that's old history. Right, so basically Peter Davidson wanted to do a spoof, a follow-up to his 30-minute uh, uh, skint that he did with uh, some of the actors from the past of Doctor Who. Uh, uh, but unfortunately, the BBC uh, never got back to him. Uh, and I have a feeling it's uh, basically they're trying to sort of move the classic period away from what they're trying to do because uh, it's not part of their uh, agenda. But nevertheless, the BBC need to understand, without that, you've got nothing, because you can't just take, you can't just cut the top half 
and forget the bottom half. The bottom half is where the basis of the show started from, the roots. If you're going to cut the roots away and create and invent it yourself, then it's not going to work. And I can assure you, I'm not too pleased with what they're doing with it now. Uh, it's more bloody pantomime, isn't it, really, when you think about it. Look at what they're, the sort of actors are coming into it. You know, they're just, in my opinion, they're not up to, they're not up to the job. They've got some big time American actors coming into it, but I don't know, uh, to be honest with you, I'm like that with, uh, what, the 60th anniversary. I don't think it's going to be as good as it's uh, been hyped up to be, you know what I mean? So don't be disappointed uh, if it's not what you thought it would be, because uh, I think it's not going to be what it's going to be. <laughs> I know it sounds bloody double dodge what I'm talking, but you know what I mean. It's not going to have uh, the. It, it's not going to have this sort of feel that 60th anniversary should be. It's gonna, it's gonna probably be a lot of uh, inclusion and stuff like that, you know, keep, uh, minorities of uh, the. Uh, it's gonna be a lot of LB, LG, what's it, LGBT, whatever they call themselves, a group of uh, political uh, lobbyist group uh, that have, uh, that sort of infiltrated the BBC, infiltrated politics and whatever, uh, and uh, they're they're calling the shots, uh, which is not very good. Because it means like, it's like your manager is no longer picking the team. It's the bleeding uh, FA or they're picking the England team because they're good for the hype, good for the merchandise, good for the money, good for the commercial. That's not good at all. If you're doing it for that reason, we don't, your team will not win. They'll, um, because you've left out the best players because you don't like them. I remember Brian Clough there, who should have been England manager. And at the time, he was going for uh, what you call uh, the actual England job. And the country was behind him. Unfortunately, the people that are in charge were bloody old farts, you know, that belonged to the Victorian age. And one of them, uh, Brian Clough, was downstairs and he saw this guy, uh, old guy, he's about 80 year old, walking up the stairs and he couldn't, and he says, do you need a walk, do you need a hand, mate? <laughs> he says, <laughs> and the guy looked at him really stubborn. What he didn't realise, that guy was on the bloody panel. Uh, and so they gave it to Ron Greenwood. What did we do in the World Cup? Nothing. We went out. Uh, Brian Clough would have uh, got the right players in and he would have won the... I think we could have won the World Cup with Brian Clough in charge. But anyway, that's that's football. This is Doctor Who. Uh, and that's one of the reasons why I'm trying to make a point. That is a point I'm making. Uh, but I think Peter Davison's been hard done by it. And I think at the end of the day, you know, you cannot sort of push that aside. But anyway, uh, I'm sure you have your opinion on that. But I think he should have. I think the BBC should have made the classic era more inclusive to the 60th anniversary. Anyway, never mind all that. Uh, moving on, uh, we've got the updates. Uh, my Doctor Who page, the Lee Anthony Davis to Doctor Who page on Facebook, has now moved up to 52, 52 followers on there and uh, 48 likes. Uh, and my group, the Lee Anthony Davis, the Doctor Who group on Facebook, is now, has now done it. It's reached 70. 70 members have joined. Fantastic. Right, moving on to my Instagram account. That has, that's improved as well. That's gone up to 93 followers. So I'm really pleased with that. So thank you very much to one and all of you. You know, I really appreciate that. As well as the subscribers, I've had new subscribers coming to this channel. I'd like to thank you very much. I do appreciate it. I don't forget you. I read the comments and everything. Whether they're bad or good, I'm still appreciative because it's good feedback. Anyway, moving on. I've got the Doctor Who merchandise. This is where I'm going now. Uh, here we go. Uh, I'll get with the quiz. I haven't forgot the dot two quiz. Don't worry. Uh, I'm just going to go through these quickly. Uh, here's another one from my dot two merchandise uh, collection. Uh, the uh, Doctor Who. This one's a, a hundred years of uh, broadcasting through time and space uh, with the main feature Doctor Who. Uh, it's a sort of magazine, but with all sorts of stuff in it. I won't go through it all. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is my other magazine with Colin Baker when he was a doctor. Another uh, cover with the Cybermen on. There you go. 
the very first Doctor. Uh, this is a Target magazine. Uh, this is uh, William Hartnell. I think that's the actual Daleks from the very first adventure. He starred with them. Uh, here's this. Uh, this is uh, the Time Creature, I call him. Uh, I didn't understand really what they were, but I, apparently they were. he was uh, him and this woman uh, were actually uh, time itself, you know, like uh, sort of made into, uh, I don't know, it's like atoms in it put together, and uh, but I don't know. Uh, as far as I'm concerned, I had no idea what Chibnall was doing. <laughs> I didn't, I really didn't. I, I just presumed they were aliens, but there you go. He's on the front cover. Uh, he's uh, known as a time, whatever. He was in the flux, yeah? Right, moving on. Uh, here's another one. This is another Dot 2 magazine full of goodies and pictures and images and stories. There you go. Uh, with the original targets uh, on the top of it. Uh, Jodie Whittaker's Sprouts Wings, as, we, as you see there, in the uh, Angel Adventure in the Flux. There you go. Uh, and finally... I'll show you this one. This is my favourite master. This is Roger Delgado. There you go. Bang. With John Pertwee there, with, along with the Axons, the Demons, and, uh, and of course, the Autons. Right, OK, then. That's the end of that. It's time for my Doctor Who quiz question. Uh, the answer to yesterday's Doctor Who quiz question. Remember, I asked which were the three that were selected for the role of Doctor Who uh, that eventually went to Tom Baker. The three that were eventually, uh, three that were sort of uh, sized down because they had a, a lot of people to see, but these three were the main three for Barry Letts at the time. Uh, Fulton Mackay, uh, you know him, he was the prison guard in Porridge. Uh, he'd also been in Doctor Who in uh, the Silurians in 1970. He played that scientist uh, who wanted to know everything, you know, he wanted to know all the knowledge the Silurians had. They killed him in the end. Uh, also, uh, the other the other guy was Graham Crowden. Uh, you probably remember Graham, who was actually, he at the time, he couldn't do it because he was involved in theatre and stuff, and he wanted, and if a role came up in the theatre, and he's doing Doctor Who, he won't be able to take the job on. So he decided to stick with the theatre. But he did appear in Doctor Who in 1979, 1980, I think, in The Horns of Nimon. He played that uh, uh, that uh, that scientist or whatever, you know, I don't know. He, he, he put a lot of uh, dramatic uh, pathos into it, you know. Uh, I, can't I can't remember. Uh, what is called his character, but anyway, you know the one I mean. He was that uh, egotistic loony uh, who put. Uh, uh, he he did a deal with the uh, Nymons, didn't he? And uh, they and they promised him uh, military technology so he can conquer the, conquer the universe again. Right, so that's Graham Crowden. Uh, he couldn't take the job. And the other one is more significant. Michael Benteen. He was offered the part. But the only, and he added a condition, he would have to write his own scripts. And for Barry Letts, that is not acceptable. Uh, so he uh, declined the kind offer. And that's when they looked around, and I think it's Steve, Sean Sutton, who's head of the drama, uh, suggested, why not Tom Baker? You know, so they had a look at Tom Baker in a film called The Golden Voyage of Sinbad or Seventh Voyage. And he played the evil prince, and he was bloody good. Uh, so he could act, <laughs> and uh, it proved to be the best choice they ever made. I don't think the other three would have worked as good, you know. Anyway, they're the three. Uh, my new question now for you, before I go, is uh, in the classic era, to celebrate then the 20th anniversary of the show, the five doctors, which starred, obviously, uh, Patrick Troughton, John Pertwee, uh, also Peter Davison, the then Doctor. Also, uh, they had uh, a, an actor who who looked like William Hartnell, but obviously he wasn't. Uh, and also Tom Baker, but Tom Baker was uh, decided he didn't want to do it because he'd just finished Doctor Who, and he was, you know, he'd done it for seven years, and I can understand him saying. Uh, no to JNT. Uh, Terence Dix tried to uh, talk him round, but there was no way. So that to use a clip of him in Sharda, didn't they? But anyway, what I want to know is who was the actor that played 
William Hartnell in that adventure. Who was the actor that played William Hartnell in that adventure? I'll give you the answer tomorrow. Right, OK, then. Uh, coming up, yes, it's Lost in Space. Uh, it's a cliffhanger, as usual. Uh, that's coming up very shortly on my channel, so keep an eye out for that. Right, that's it. Uh, for the first time, I have got it out just after midnight. I'm usually 3, 4, 5 o'clock in the morning with these videos, but not this time. I decided to act on it fast and move quickly. So I've done it, and it's out now. At the right time, it should go out. So I'd like to say thank you for watching me. I appreciate uh, your time you're given. It really is uh, a joy to do these, and uh, but not for you lot, obviously, to listen to it. <laughs> but once again, thank you very much. Thank you for the subscribers. Thank you for everyone joining my group on Facebook and my page and following me on Instagram as well. Until tomorrow, have a nice night and I'll see you hopefully at the same time tomorrow. Bye for now.